Welcome to Introduction to SQL for Excel Users, Part 17, Join Filtering. I am your instructor, Dave Langer. This video will all be SSMS, and that's because there really isn't an analog to what we will be covering to, in today's video in Excel, so it'll just be all SQL. Now, the subject of this tutorial is join filtering, and this topic is important for two reasons. One, as we'll see, there are some nuances when you filter in your join conditions rather than in the WHERE clause. And it's just good to know, generally speaking, as you write your SQL queries to be aware of this. And secondarily, and maybe even more importantly, because if you are ever planning on interviewing for a position, maybe a data analyst or a business analyst position where SQL skills are part of the job, Join condition filtering is often an interview question that people get asked to ascertain whether or not they have a sufficient level of SQL knowledge to actually do the job. So it's always good to know these things for not only for your own queries, but in case you ever get interviewed for a position. So here I am in SSMS, and we have a query. And what you see here is a very simple query that does the following. It grabs all of the records from the DIM customer table in the database, and then interjoins them on fact internet sales. So it says, okay, give me only the customers that have one or more records in fact internet sales. And you can see that on the, the on clause here that we're joining on customer keys. Interjoin says, look, only the records on the left that match records, records on the right. Those are the only things that we keep. That's what an interjoin does. Cool. Now then we have a where clause that says, look, I only want to keep those records where the product key in fact internet sales corresponds to 374. Okay, so all the customers that have bought anything in fact internet sales, that's what these two things do, right? That's what the interjoin does. And then we say throw out anything other than the records that have product keys equal to 374. And by the way, I just picked 374 at random. It has no significance whatsoever. And then lastly, go ahead and group by the customers and then give me the total amount of sales. So essentially for each customer that ever bought product key 374, tell me how much of product 374 they've bought. So I can go ahead and highlight this and run it. And it'll take a second here to run. And you can see here that all the amounts are the same. And the most likely explanation for that, and you can check this if you want, I haven't, but I'm willing to bet that this is the case, is that all of these customers bought exactly one 374, and it happens to retail for $2,443.35. So this is our base query that we're going to be working with to understand the nuances of joint filtering for this tutorial. Now notice that down here, we have 142 rows of data. So that means 142 individual customers have bought product 374. And it looks like all of them have only bought one 374, but that's what we have, 142. So I want you to keep that number in mind, 142 records, because that's going to be important. So we can also do this very same thing by not using a WHERE clause. Notice that I've removed the WHERE clause, and what I've done is I've added a filtering condition on the join, and you do that in the ON clause. So we say, hey, grab all the records from table DIM customer, interjoin them with all the records on fact internet sales where the customer keys match up and where the product key equals 374 which makes some sense, right? This basically works kind of like the WHERE clause. So if we run this, and we see the output, notice that it's exactly the same. Everybody looks like they've purchased only one of product 374, and we get back 142 rows. So what we've done here is we said, look, I can use a join filtering condition right here, and that obviates the need for my WHERE clause. Produces exactly the same thing. Okay, cool. Everything seems to be making total sense right now. What we want to do, though, is just to make sure that we fully understand what's going on here, let's talk about the processing logically one more time so that we understand what's going on here. 
So I'm going to scroll back up to the original query. And here's how logically SQL interprets this, uh, interprets our query and executes it logically. So froms and joins are done first. They are the first things to get executed. So literally, SQL Service is okay. I'm going to grab all of the customer records from Dim Customer, and then I'm going to interjoin all the records on Fact Internet Sales where the customer keys match up. This right here produces a virtual table. That's the first thing that happens. That's the first thing that happens. And a whole bunch of records come back. And then SQL says, okay, next up, I'm going to process the where clause. And then it throws out all the records where the product key is not equal to 374. Or conversely, it keeps all the records from this virtual table that is created where the product key is equal to 374. Sweet. Then it groups by customer key, first name, and last name. It creates buckets based on these three things. And then it processes the select list. And we have the three things right there in our select list like we know we need to have. And then lastly, we say, cool, sum up each customer bucket. As it turns out, they're all the same, but we didn't know that at the time we wrote the query. And that's how this works. Now let's scroll back down to the second query again and run through the logical processing for it. As usual, we start with a from. We grab all the records from dim customer. We then interjoin all the records from fact internet sales where the customer keys match up and, and the product key is 374. This happens, this filtering right here that I have highlighted, this is super important. This filtering that I have highlighted here happens before the where clause. Because remember, froms and joins are executed first before where. So if you have a filtering condition in your on clause in one of your joins, this filter is executed before the where clause. Now, in this case, it's all great. Right? We get exactly the same result as we did from the first query. Everything works just fine. Everyone's got the same total sales amount. We have 142 records. Everything is hunky-dory. Now, this is kind of a trap, if you think about it. It's a trap because this might lull you into a sense of security. And let's see what I'm talking about here in a second. Let's revisit this first query, but this time we're gonna use a left outer join instead of an inner join. You can see here, dim customer, left outer join, where everything is equal to 374. Now, if I run this, you'll notice that I get back exactly the same thing. 2,443, 0.35, 142 records. And let's think about this logical process and understand why it works exactly the same as the previous query. Okay, we pull all the records from dim customer. Standard procedure, great. Now we're gonna execute a left outer join. And as we know, what defines a left outer join is that everything from the left table, in this case, dim customer is the left table, everything in this table is preserved, whether there's a match in the right table or not. That's what a left outer join does. So we're gonna have every customer record, no matter what, come back from this portion of the query. The virtual table will have every customer record, no matter what. Sweet. So we left outer join fact internet sales on the customer key. Now what that's gonna happen, what's gonna happen behind the scenes is this virtual table will have one row, at least one row, for every customer, maybe multiple rows as we know, maybe multiple rows, but at least at a minimum, one row for every individual customer. And then it might have some null values from the right table. If there is no match here, the left outer join will say, look, all the fact internet sales stuff will just be null. So if we have a customer that never bought anything on the internet, they will be in this virtual table and they will just have null values for everything from fact internet sales because there's nothing in fact internet sales to match. However, once again, the left outer join tells us that we're going to keep all the customers no matter what. Sweet. So we say, okay, great. So that virtual table is then fed into the where clause, which is processed next. And the where clause says, oh, out of this big virtual table that you created, where there's going to be a whole bunch of nulls and stuff in it, I only want to keep those records where the product key is equal to 374. 
what this does is this discards those records that have null. So this is why this works just like an inner join, is because we say, look, only keep those records from the virtual table where the product key is equal to 374. Null is not equal to 374. Ergo, those records get thrown out. And this query returns back the same data as the inner join, right? Here's all the rows with 2443.35 as the total sales amount, 142 records. So this works just the same because this where clause essentially gets us down to the same level of filtering as we got with the inner join. Now, this is where the fun begins. So let's keep the left outer join. You can see right here. I'm going to keep the left outer join, but I'm going to get rid of the where clause. Notice it's gone now and add the filtering here in the join condition in the on clause. Now, as you might imagine, as you, if you read the, the comments up here, this, there's going to be something that happens here. So we go ahead and we run this. Okay, so this is taking a little bit longer to run, so that should tell us something. Oh, hey, oh, oh, hey now, what's this? Look at these total sales amounts that are null. And notice over here, we have 18,484 rows. This is the nuance of using filtering on a join condition. As it turns out, it doesn't really matter whether you use the filtering in a where clause or in an on clause in a join condition if you're using an inner join. It doesn't matter. It works exactly the same basically all the time. However, if you're using the left outer join, putting your filtering condition in the on clause versus a where clause can give you radically different results as we see here. And let's walk through the processing again just so that we can see what we're talking about. So logically speaking, dim customer, all the records get pulled. SQL says, hey, Dave wants to do a left outer join. That means I'm going to keep all the rows in dim customer, all of them. He wants a left outer join fact internet sales. Sweet on the condition right here of the customer key and where fact Internet sales product keys equal to 374. In essence, what happens is before I actually attempt the join, first thing I'm going to do is filter down fact internet sales to only those records that have a product key of equal to 374. Okay, cool. And then go ahead and left out or join that subset of fact internet sales on the customer keys. Now here's the problem. Because this is a left outer join, because this is a left outer join, I'm still keeping all the customers. So I get a whole bunch of nulls back. That's what happens. The SQL says, okay, cool, you know what? I'm keeping all the customers no matter what. That's what I do with a left outer join, because this is the left table. And he, Dave's filtered down fact internet sales to only this subset of records here. Cool, and I'll try and join them where I can, and I'll fill in nulls for everything else. But here's the thing, right? I, this is not exactly what I intended. This is not what I intended. However, given the processing of SQL vis-a-vis -vis left outer joins and the fact that joins happen before the where clause, this is what you get. You get all the rows back. And of course, there will be a certain subset of these. Let's see if I can find one here. Oh, okay, you can see right here. Here's one right here that is not null. So there will be 142 out of these 18,484 rows, there will be precisely 142 of them that have a non-null value for total sales amount. But because I'm doing a left outer join and I'm using the filtering right here, I'm getting back all the customer rows, all 18,484. Now, if you really, really, really wanted to write your query this way using a left outer join, but you want it to work as we expect, that is you only get back 142 rows, you can do that. And we've seen how you do that before. You can essentially make a left outer join perform, behave like an inner join by adding a where clause and saying where a particular column is not null. And you can see that here. Now, if I run this query, I get back everything I expect, 142 rows. Once again, here's the moral of the story. If you're using join filtering with inner joins, you're good, nothing to worry about. If you're putting in your on clauses with a left outer join, 
think very, very hard about what you're doing because otherwise you're going to get this funky stuff where if you don't have some way of narrowing down the null values, you're going to get back all the rows from the left table, as we saw before. We got back 18,484 rows when in fact what we expected was 142. So there you have it. Join conditions, the nuances of it. They're great, powerful stuff. If you're using a lot of inner joins, you don't need to worry about your where clauses. You can just stick all of your filtering in your on clauses in your inner joins and everything works great. If you're using a left outer join, beware. Just be careful. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I will be publishing two videos a week for the next few weeks. And until next time, please stay healthy. And I wish you very happy data sleuthing.